the, the statistics once on like who was watching from where. All over the world. It was interesting. Yeah, all over the world. So, so hi everybody. This is April again from the Madison County Public Library. This is... Steve. Steve. Hello. Also, also from the Madison County Public Library. I wanted Steve here at the beginning so that you knew you were not being subjected to Grandma and April's tech talks again. So anyway, um, I do have some announcements today. We are in the, you notice, we're not at the desk. And we're not anywhere in the library that looks normal. We are actually in the garage. And the reason for that is because we are gonna be going outside where Steve is gonna be teaching me something very interesting that we will talk about here in just a bit. Um, so you're getting a little bit of a behind the scenes look at the garage, woo! Very exciting. Also, because we're in here and we're not in our normal location, let us know that you can hear us because I project very loudly, but that's my theater training. Steve doesn't really talk very loudly at all. He can, though. trust me. Yes, I can. Yes, he can. So make sure you let us know that you can hear us. So um, one of the things that I came across yesterday on social media when I was scrolling through, something my friend had posted, and it was daily quarantine questions. And I really, really spoke to me because it was a list of different things just a checklist to make sure that you are practicing best health practices for yourself and for others. And it just really, really struck home with me. And it was, one, who am I checking on or connecting with today? What expectations of normal am I letting go of today? How am I getting outside today? How am I moving my body today? How am I expressing my creativity today? And what, time, what type of self-care am I practicing today and what am I grateful for? I will not subject you to all of my answers to those. However, what am I, what expectation of normal am I letting go of today was one that really, really just struck home this morning. Is the, that, the expectation is that things are not going to change. And so I am embracing change today because as we found, things are changing on like an hourly basis. With, with all, with the virus, with announcements, with closures, with services, across the board. I'm expecting it to go back to normal. Yeah, I mean, we are gonna have, we're gonna have a normal. We're gonna have a normal, but right now, everything is changing. Everything is changing. So with that, there are some changes that I'm gonna announce right now. Uh, the Seed Library is actually on hold. Seed Library, or Seed Pickups from our Seed Library are on hold at the moment. We ran into some problems where we are trying to still practice social distancing and limiting person-to-person -person contact, and it was very difficult to do without creating a space for people to congregate. And so right now it is on hold. It is not canceled. It is just on hold. Um, speaking of holds, our locker system is now live. It went live this morning. We've already gotten comments from people who've used it. It is very simple. There's a lovely tutorial on social media featuring a gorgeous redhead uh, that is available uh, for you to watch. Wait. Wait. The gorgeous redhead is available? No, the gorgeous oh, redhead is not available. Okay, that was very confusing. No, God, no. Featuring a gorgeous redhead that is available. Okay. No, 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 no. The video is, All right. oh, God. I just wanted to make that clear. That's fair. That is fair. The gorgeous Reddit is not available. Okay. She's also very humble. <laughs> um, so there's a video tutorial that is available for you to watch on social media. Um, it is on Instagram and it is on Facebook. I don't know if it's on our website. It is on our YouTube page as well. Um, it's about not even a full minute. and just it goes over the process of, check, of get, picking up your holes through our lockers. So, so simple. There's also instructions on all of this. So, um, so with, with all of that in mind, I want to just reiterate our online services are available. Um, we have expanded checkouts on digital materials. You can still use your phone number on OverDrive. If you don't have a library card, we'd like you to get a library card. But right now, that's a little harder to do. So if you don't have one or you lost it, you can still go on there with uh, your phone number to, to access materials. 
Um, we announced yesterday that we we're going to start doing some Facebook Live story times. That is still a, uh, still in the works. We're going to work on that. We're hoping to go live with those next week. We'll have more details on that. We did say yesterday that it was going to be daily. It's probably not going to be daily because that is a big commitment. But, and as we said, everything is changing all the time right now. Um, but there are definitely going to be some next week. I will say, though, that around 10 o'clock every morning on Facebook, uh, David, our youth services librarian in Richmond, is posting preschool content, and we will be going live around those times for the, to keep it consistent um, for these story times. And then he's posting other things in the afternoon for older kids. So, I think that that's everything. Good Lord. Can I show you something real quick? Sure. The, the questions about how am I uh, connecting with people, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. My wife came up with something last night that she, we live kind of on a little dead end street. And uh, she decided to, we had some sidewalk chalk sitting around from when we used to babysit this little boy. And uh, she decided she was going to go out and start a mandala oh, out cool. in the street in front of our house. Yeah. And then she let, she wiped down the box of chalk, the outside of it, and set it on the curb. And then she sent a text to all the neighbors to go out and add to it. Uh huh. So whenever anybody drives down the street, we'll see who's added what. And I love that. So we can engage and not have to actually face to face engage with yes. anybody. I've, I've seen posts where people are having, um, they're getting outside, which is very important to do right yeah. now. We are, we're not in, we're social distancing, we're not in social isolation. Right. So we're practicing, you know, social distancing, being six feet apart, um, and we're getting, you go outside. With the schedule I was talking about yesterday with my kids, they are going to a friend's house this afternoon where they are going to practice social distancing and get outside and away from the house and away from the screens. I know I'm talking to you through a screen right now, but go outside. It is important. Move your body. Make sure that you're still practicing these things and taking care of yourself. It's so tempting to just, I mean, it's tempting for me, just when I get home from here, to go put my pajamas on and turn on something on Netflix and just flake. But you, can, you can't do that. We've got to keep, we've got to keep functioning. We've got to stay healthy. We've got to get outside. And it's a gorgeous day. So, all right. Steve, the reason you are here is one, just spare you my tech talks. <laughs> but also, I'll stop joking about that eventually if this stops being funny. Um, but also because we're starting this thing on Tuesdays and Thursdays with you and me, yeah. where Brandon is not here. Brandon is with me on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But Tuesdays and Thursdays, he has programming that he has to do in other ways. And so he's not able to be here. So I have asked Steve to join me. If you remember Steve, he might not look the same. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. A little different. Steve was my guest last week when we did our cooking on last Tuesday. And uh, I, that sandwich is still really good. I'm out of pretzels now. I can't use that either. <laughs> well, the pretzels and raisins are on our grocery list sitting on the counter at home. So. Are you going to make Are you? Oh, gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sandwich was really good. It was. Well, good. So we're going to start doing... I'm calling it survivalist training for April, but that's not what it is. But I, I just kept seeing these memes at the beginning yeah. of all this and being like, think, you know, people start looking at their partner that they're or the person that they're dating and go like, how are you? How are you at hunting and gathering and all that stuff? Right. Which kind of led to this. So you yeah, have some so, skills. Yeah, I ever since I was a wee lad, I spent my time in the woods. Any, any opportunity I had, my dad and I were out doing whatever. And that just became my obsession, being out in the woods and making do with what I could gather up and that sort of thing. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to start today with how to build or how to start a flint and steel fire. Do not try this at home. Least Do not, not try this at home. Not in your home. And especially not in a building full of books, which is why we're in the garage and we're going to be going outside. 
Uh, the, what we're going to do today, is, a, a lot of people are familiar with the little fire starting rods, the ferrule rods. Um, this is older than that. This is at least from the 1600s. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna learn how to we're gonna learn how to start a fire today with just flint and steel and a couple other items. And we're just gonna do that every every, every Tuesday, Tuesday and Thursday. Um, there's something I'm gonna show you in here. I'm thinking maybe Thursday I'll show you how to make it. Um, it's something that is critical to using a flint and steel because the sparks are cooler. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna kind of right. go along and have a new little Skill to learn. Again, I repeat, as we go. do not try this at home. That is our legal disclaimer. Now I'm going to go start a fire. All right. Let's do this. All right. You coming with us? Like we said, we're not going to be inside, we're going to be outside. Oh, somebody's in love. This is uh, this is my little fire bundle. I've got lots of things in here. I've got lots of ways to make fire. Um, well, several ways. A lighter, but eventually it'll run out of gas. Um, I had mentioned the ferro rod. There's the striker for the ferro rod. And there's the ferro rod. What is a ferro rod? It. It is a, uh, it's an alloy, it's several different metals. Okay. And those sparks, you can start just about anything on fire with those sparks. They get to no about, it's about 3,000 degrees, those sparks right there. 3,000 degrees? Yeah. Whoa. Um, which makes, it, it, it makes it simpler for starting a fire. Um, I kind of like having to struggle a little bit. <laughs> you like struggling? <laughs> so, I've got, now this is not an old arrowhead, it's just a factory made thing you can pick up with a, uh, well I got it at Fort Pittsburgh at, this, at the shop. But I've also got some chert. Chert and flint are, are very similar stone. Okay. And they're very hard. You can also use quartz. Um, quartz is abundant in Kentucky. Yeah, you can, so, you can yeah. make sparks with, sparks with quartz. This is an arrowhead somebody gave me that found it in a field in Iowa. So that that's that's, that's cool. an old one. Um, now I don't know if you'll be able to see the sparks as well here, but this, you can probably see that they're smaller. They kind of scatter about. Now what those sparks, th this this is the steel part of flint and steel. It's high carbon, very hard. It's hardened, if I dropped it, it would break into just a bunch of pieces. Oh, don't want to do that. Okay. So, yeah, you want to be careful with your fire bundle. The nice thing about learning how to make a fire this way is ultimately I can fall in the creek, take these out, wipe them off, and, and I start still fire. Have, I still have spark. As, now here's my secret ingredients. Um, now if that falls, it's going to take a while for that to, yeah. to dry out and be able to start a fire. I've got two things in my pocket. I've actually been warming them up because I seal them with beeswax. Okay. So if they go in the water, they stay, they stay dry. dry. Okay. So you got they they kind of have to warm up a little bit. I have to work at getting them open. One okay. of them is my little tinder bundle, and what this is. This is just uh, red cedar bark. It just, it just sheds off the trees. You don't hurt the tree by gathering this. But it's very dry. That's just a bunch of dust you can see. And you don't need much. We're gonna take a little bit. About like that. To start our fire. The rest of it I'll put back in my can. Keep it dry. 
And then the other thing I have, which is... Oh, that is really re dry. Look yeah. at all the dust. Which, this other can, this is really critical for starting a fire with flint and steel. Okay. Without this, it isn't going to happen. Okay. <clears throat> this is called char cloth. This is what I will teach you how to make on Thursday. But that is just a piece of cotton twine that I've, I cooked it basically. Okay. What I did is I cooked all the bio material out of it at low temperature. Uh -huh. So what I've ended up with is almost pure carbon. Okay. Carbon loves to catch a spark. Okay. It's like, it, one way to think about that is like the charcoal you use in a grill. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much to start that charcoal on fire. Right. This is the same. It doesn't take much to start it on fire. Okay. So the the sparks from 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 the steel and the flint are about 1300 degrees. So this it's really critical to have some char cloth. Cuz I can sh I can rain these sparks down on this on this tinder all day even as dry as it is. I can rain this down on here it won't start on fire. Okay. It just won't. Um, so what we do is we take our char cloth and we pinch it there. So we're gonna try and catch a spark. Okay. And it's just, luck of this, I'm glad that didn't hit the ground. Me too. Luck of the strike. One will eventually land on there. Here we go. I see one, oh, wow. one little spark. And it just caught. Yeah. Now it's kind of breezy out here. I don't need to blow on that. I don't need to rush. Normally when you're building a fire, I, you know, you would have um, some wood, some larger oh, wow. pieces of wood. It's spreading. Um, and it'll just smolder like that. So what we'll do is we'll tuck it in that. People would refer to it as a bird's nest. And then blow on it, get a little oxygen in there. Again, do not try this at home. There it goes. Oh, wow. So now you would, hopefully you'd already have your fire set. You just tuck that in there. So you just tuck that, just in, tuck that in the middle of it. Yeah. Add a few little larger sticks and off it goes. Wow. Yeah. Catches right up. Yeah. Now that the the tinder it'll burn up pretty quickly, but that that little piece of char cloth uh -huh. it'll just it'll smolder That's for the essential ingredient. ten minutes. It'll sit there and just smolder. All right. You want to try it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Do I want to try? There's nothing in here. I'm there is nothing in here. It, in there it is empty. To let it go out. It's got a couple rocks at the bottom. Which that works. Snuff it a little bit. Oh All yeah, right. I want to try it. So, here's what you need to try first. Okay. Getting a spark. Okay. So. While doing this while social hold, distancing is gonna be interesting. Yeah, I'll set it right there and then okay. you take I'll just, it. Okay. Yeah. So you, you you're gonna hold on to it pretty tight. Okay. This you don't want to hold on to real tight. Okay. And what you're doing is you're taking this flint and you're shaving off pieces of metal. Okay. It, the, it's it's actually the metal. That, you but know, that if you take a coat hanger and bend it and bend it, how yeah. it gets hot? Yeah. Same thing. Okay. We're shaving it up. We're bending it really fast, which okay. is what gets it up to the 1300 degrees. Right. We're shaving that, shaving a curl of, of metal off of there. All right. So like that. Yeah. And then just hold this fairly loosely. How many this fingers time. do you have? Just get Three. two fingers in there. Just two? I have yeah. small hands. Yeah, that's all okay. right. Okay. All right. Tilt that. This? No other way. Yeah. There, yeah. I got, I got some. And that's all it takes. I mean, you saw it just took one, <laughs> one spark. I can start fire. So here, we'll get out a little bit more. Okay, so 
You, but before we got started, you were talking about how you defined yourself, because I keep wanting to call you a survivalist, and that is not accurate. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, uh, survivalist has kind of taken on a different terminology. Um, I ran across a definition in a book. Actually, it was from, from the time period of Daniel Boone being out here. Um, a woods runner. And that was really just somebody who was more comfortable out in the woods, fishing, hunting, gathering, doing what was necessary. It didn't mean they were a hermit and that's where they lived all the time. Mm -hmm. But they're the ones that you kind of turn to. There wasn't any grocery store. Right. Um, it was the woods runners that would go out and gather food, hunt, that sort of thing. And I just, I spent so much of my childhood growing up that way. Um, I didn't know, you know, it, well, I wasn't learning all these skills then. Um, I was kind of like every other kid, fishing pole and mm -hmm. worms and that sort of thing. But I, I just became more and more interested in how to accomplish these things mm -hmm. before we had all the easy ways. But I find this pretty easy. Sorry, this is... no social distancing there. But yeah, it'll blow away. Yeah. Um, all right, so about right there? Yeah, and I'm just going to set this little piece of shirt on there. Yeah. So put that there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So it's just going to take one spark to land just right on that. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. No. Nope. Uh, I think my fingers are too close. I'm shifting it. Hang on. This is not as easy as you made it seem. Ah, I hit my fingers. Did it get? No, it hit my thumb. I know why you're doing it. Come on. I keep hitting my knuckles. Okay, how can I do it without hitting my knuckles? Like that, maybe? Yes. All right. Are you hitting the knuckles of the right hand or your left hand? That knuckle. Oh, yeah. Man. So close. Oh, that was so close. It bounced off of it. Hmm. Okay, turn your piece of char cloth around. Okay. Kind of fluff it up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Now All try right. it. Try this again. <gasps> I got one! I okay. got one! All right, so set that down. Yay! Set this, this down. Right, we're not so you're not in any. No, we're yeah. not. Okay, so take it, place it's it right in the, in the middle. Okay. Gather that up. Okay. Bring it around. Ooh, it's getting warm. I can feel it. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Turn it. Maybe a different this way. So so that the char cloth is on the bottom. Okay. Now blow up into it. Oh, it's getting warm. There you go. Now blow right in there. There you go. <laughs> I have Air created five. fire! <laughs> Air five, yes. <laughs> okay. So if I can do it, you can definitely do it. That was so amazing. Thank you, Steve, for teaching me this. This was so cool. This is the highlight of my day. Uh, my family and I, when we sit around the dinner table, we ask, what was your favorite part of the day? That was definitely mine. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Steve will be back with me and we will be doing, we will be teaching me how to survive in the wild. Um, and Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, Brandon will be with me. Keep an eye on our Facebook page and social media for updates because things are changing all the time. Embrace the change. That's what I'm doing today. Get outside. It is beautiful. Yeah, it's a day out Practice here. social distancing better than we just did. We did our we did our best, but it was hard. Practice social distancing, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Love you, mean it. Have a great day.